Let's talk tourism. Daniel Chaveria is a tourism marketer who represents a wide range of clients in Costa Rica from hotels to tour companies. He's worked in the industry for approaching 30 years now. From everything uh, from a tour operator, a hotel marketing manager, he even uh, has his own soft brand known as Enchanted Hotels. Uh, he's also represented Costa Rica in an official capacity in, all over the globe. Dan speaks multiple languages, and it might be one of the most fun people you'll ever attend a trade show with. Mr. Chavaria, let's talk tourism. Yeah, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Please tell me, remind me, I mean, I've known you for, geez, 20 years now. How'd you get your start in tourism? Well, this... Uh wasn't planned, you know, and uh, I belong to a generation when Costa Rica wasn't a tourist destination. And uh, it all started with the with the, um, the Nobel Peace Prize that Oscar Arias won and put Costa Rica on the map. And th that time, uh, e every other country in the world wanted to send tourists or people from those countries wanted to come and make tourism in Costa Rica. And we, we weren't prepared. Costa Rica didn't have uh, the tourist career uh, uh, at the universities and we didn't have the, the tourist attractions that we have nowadays. So uh, many people that weren't um, people from the tourist branch started working in tourism because the demand was there. And then um, hotels start opening and I, I got involved with a tour operator that uh, I was co-founder of an incoming tour operator in Costa Rica, specialized uh, for a European market, especially uh, Germany. I just came back from Germany that time and uh, we were getting uh, uh, the first flights from Condor and that time LTU direct flights coming to Costa Rica. And uh, in a way, I was responsible for those flights to, to start because uh, before getting involved in tourism, I was working with the uh, development agency Zinde in Germany, uh, promoting investments in Costa Rica. And also we were, uh, advising the airlines uh, to try to establish direct flights to Costa Rica. And they started. They started almost at the same time that Cinde closed the office. So we got involved into opening this incoming agency for uh, the German uh, tourists that were about to come. So a lot of people have talked about uh, Oscar Arias' Nobel Peace Prize there for brokering the Central American peace, basically, right? So I guess we go back to that troubled time in the 90s for Central America with so much uh, civil war. And here we find ourselves in another wartime period. Um, do you see another potential rebirth for Costa Rica in that regard of, you know, coming out of this, coming out of a, of a regional mess, a leader? Oh sure, the comparison is uh, is um, very how, how to say it, it, it. But nowadays, well, back those days, it, there were a lot of civil wars, and Costa Rica was an island of peace, and we didn't have an army, and uh, it, nobody knew that. <laughs> like uh, there were not social media and the news didn't spread that. And, and it wasn't like a big important news that that this little country didn't have an army. So uh, it wasn't that well known, but as soon as uh, the country or our president got the former president got the his Nobel prize, everybody was aware of that. Mm -hmm. And they found it nice and pretty to come to a country which was peace loving and, and peaceful in the middle of all the problems that were happening in the region. And 
if, if I compare it with today, it's uh, so, something similar, you know, Costa Rica, because of our conditions, because of the good infrastructure, because of the, the good medical services that we have or social welfare that Costa Rica offers, we are doing well with the pandemic. We are controlling it. The, the hospitals haven't uh, collapsed and uh, we the con contagious is going down. So we're doing well and that is not happening in the rest of Central America. So uh, Costa Rica has a good reputation. Costa Rica is a destination to visit as soon as the tourists can travel and can come to the region. So it, you could compare it, it it's, a, it's a different level, <laughs> but uh, Costa Rica will stand out uh, in the region and, and, uh, and make it, make it. You know, one of the weird things that as a foreigner, we first notice of work culture in Costa Rica is how Ticos bring their toothbrush to work. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I have a, a, a similar um, uh, story. When I was tour operator, I, I was uh, showing around Costa Rica to a wholesaler from Germany. And uh, we were in Guanacaste, and then he told me, please stop the car. And, and I said, what happened? There wasn't not, nothing interesting to, to see. And then he said, look at those children. Ch children from elementary school were in uniform and they were coming out from a, a dust road and they were cleaning their shoes to continue their way to the school. You know, it's, it's a matter of, uh, of uh, the education that Costa Rica has of being a, a cultivated uh, population. Uh, with a high literacy rate and, and people that, uh, are, like you say, are probably more hygienic in, in our habits. It's just the reason, the reason I mentioned that uh, is one of the things that gave me a lot of hope in the early days of the pandemic here, that if there's a country in the world that's going to get through this well, it's Costa Rica for a handful of reasons. One, it's that sort of conscientiousness and attention to personal hygiene, as small as that detail is. Um, one, attention to detail and hygiene on a personal level. Two, a high degree of social conscientiousness, where it's a very big family environment here, one big family where there's a general sense of cooperation. And then when you talk about uh, public education and public health, if there is a place that could rally an entire country to create hospital beds or bring retired doctors out of retirement, we have a really strong national um, health network that could handle this. And even though we haven't necessarily distributed the vaccines as fast as maybe you know Israel or, or uh, the UK, I'm very confident that once the machine turns on here, it's going to occur very quickly. Um, so I just, yeah, I, I have a lot of faith in Tikisia. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what, uh, Casey, I, I would add at least one more factor or, or, or a couple, <laughs> let's say, and uh, this will sound maybe strange, but Another factor is that, that I do believe Costa Rica is a country that has good luck. It's a country of uh, positive energy, of uh, good vibes, you know, and uh, many people in esoteric branches, uh, branches they, they do uh, say that. No? We, we are, countries can have good luck or bad luck. That happens to us all. And maybe it's not, by chance, but by accident. But uh, I do believe Costa Rica has good luck. In many situations, uh, as a country, we do well. No? We had good luck 
during the conquer times of the Spanish, we had good luck during the world uh, uh, football championship. We had we have had good luck in many situations. I agree. We come to Costa Rica and and they go somewhere else to neighbor countries. Yeah. They yeah. they don't cross our country. We haven't had a big earthquakes that destroyed the capital city like other neighbor countries. You know, it's a matter of good luck. That is one of the factors that I would add. And maybe the other one is related to what you just said, uh, our attitude. You know, this Pura Vida that we, that is part of, of our way of being, of our way of thinking, or it's an attitude towards life that is there. It's there. It's a positive attitude, and where where whatever comes, uh, you have some confidence that that it, things will turn out okay. I completely agree. Dan, you've worked in so many different areas of tourism, and as a tourism marketer and brand builder, um, you've you've got just such a wide range of experience, but. After all these years, what keeps you in the industry? Well, anybody working in tourism will agree with me that uh, you get passionate about it. It's really, it's really, everything is so exciting. Everything what you do is so exciting. Having to deal with people, uh, meeting other cultures and, uh, and uh, showing with pride your country and um, helping the economy, which is, right now is difficult because uh, there's almost uh, zero business. But uh, in good times, you know, you know, you know that you're attracting uh, fresh money and uh, dollars to an economy, and that is distributing all around the country and in the all different levels of the population. So uh, you feel you feel good. I, I love uh, the area of promotion. Yeah? And, and maybe I have been a promoter of uh, Costa Rica for many years. Even before being in tourism, I was promoting Costa Rica as a, as a investment site. And uh, and even as a child, I was in an organization uh, for for world peace, and, and and I used to travel a lot uh, to to promote Costa Rica and and, and our peace. It, so the area I like most is the promotion of the country, and uh, what I like best is having to deal with with all the different possibilities to do tourism in Costa Rica. So when, when I was part of a tour operator, it was uh, exciting to put together programs and uh, itineraries and to discover new uh, attractions, new sites to visit. And, uh, and uh, that, that was what I liked most. And, and now, I'm not part of a tour operator, but having a collection of uh, products of hotels, which are all around the country, it makes it the same as uh, being a tour operator, like because you have you have uh, different alternatives, and around those hotels, there's plenty of things to do and to be busy with and to. Um, be proud of uh, being in Costa Rica. Pre-pandemic, you probably hit the trade show circuit as hard as anybody that I know. Um, what's the biggest misconception the tourism trade has about Costa Rica? What's the common question you're getting or correction you need to make? Are people still thinking of Costa Rica as a place from the 80s? I mean. What's what's the biggest disconnect between the reality and the and the brand? Well, it, it has changed during the years. It has evolved, and Costa Rica has uh, done a great job, like um, positioning the country in the world. But at, at the very beginning, it was uh, complicated. Many people 
were confusing us with Puerto Rico or with the, some island on the Caribbean and, and not uh, aware, especially in the early times, because we were getting more North Americans than Europeans. And the North Americans are the ones that confuse us, confuse uh, us more with uh, an island. Okay, but uh, nowadays it's very seldom that somebody confuses uh, Costa Rica with an island. They do know uh, where the country is and what we offer in terms of uh, attractions, nature, beach, the combination that we have. But the, then the main, the main point that everybody uh, uh, questions when I go to international shows is, uh, wow, how expensive you are. Costa Rica is a, an expensive destination. And they want the, many, they have the prejudice maybe that the, because we are in Central America and in, in the Caribbean area and, and probably some might believe we are a banana republic, which we are partly, <laughs> but there the may many think that we, we will be cheap and uh, we are not, Costa Rica is not cheap. And we can discuss a lot about the reasons why we're not cheap. But I always have my answer that uh, the, if depend, depends if, if, if the partner is interesting or nice or not, because I might say, I'm sorry if you cannot afford us, go and check some other destination. Like they always mention Dominican Republic or I don't know, Nicaragua, whatever. But uh, there is a reason, there is a reason. We are a country that has um, a, a higher, a, how do you call, human development uh, index. Mm. That's why we uh, were for many years like the happiest country in the world in terms of a country happiness, not of people happiness. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, mm -hmm. normally one of the few, I think only two countries in Latin America where you have drinking water from the tap, where the electricity normally never, uh, we'd never have a, a shortage of electricity or of uh, drinking water, or there's Wi-Fi all over the place. There's a health system very robust and it like it hasn't collapsed now in pandemic times. And then, um, you know, a, a acceptable security that has been a problem in the last years, but compared to other destinations, they, it's a safe country. So there are many things that, uh, that cost money, that it's part of the social cost that Costa Rica has and makes the country more expensive. So there are people buying in, uh, in Walmart and there are people buying in boutique shops and we are the boutique destination. So you need to be ready to pay more. Good, good explanation. And, and I think, um, you know, there's, there's quality, right? Versus quantity. And yeah, I think people will talk English and they, they will be educated and will be able to read signs, the drivers, you know, but many places, uh, big, vast majority of the population cannot read and write. Well, it's interesting to go to a, to, it's interesting to travel somewhere that's cheap and miserable. And I think I would put Cuba in that category. And to be around human misery, um, if you don't feel some degree of guilt while on vacation in that environment, you're pretty rotten human. There's, it's wonderful to travel to a place where you feel like the social contract between the traveler and the local is fair. And this is one of those countries where you see uh, even the entry level guy carrying the suitcases tends to be a pretty happy, healthy person. And there's just some, there's something that feels good about that. Next question. Yeah. 
tons of tons has changed here over the last 20 plus years in tourism you know we've some amazing changes some things we probably like to do over um where do you see costa rica changing in the next 10 years and what's the direction you'd like to see it go mm -hmm. from a tourist for perspective tourism. for tourism yeah good question because um uh, we all we all aspire to to get more to get more business more tourism more visitation more airlines and and in 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 a way there is a risk of uh, of getting into the mass tourism uh, niche and i think we all agree in costa rica we don't want to get there the, the, i don't know that we all do maybe not all but for sure the majority of uh, of the of the main players yeah. in Costa Rica do not want to get there. We all want more business, but uh, not mass tourism. In, in that case, we need to continue uh, being more expensive. <laughs> we need to continue making more money out of, uh, of, of less uh, tourism. But um, I think we will continue in that direction we the the costa rica uh, uh, um, sustainable brand is is very strong and uh, will continue leading uh, to be a sustainable destination every day more and more the population gets involved in in acting sustainable and being sustainable and responsible and um and also the government, like those decisions of uh, celebrating the bicent bicentenary with uh, being carbon neutral, uh, those are political decisions that that we need to uh, celebrate and and be happy with. I, so I think we will continue in growing in that sense. I hope that we continue growing in quality and not in quantity, like uh, opening um, more uh, new tourist regions and not making bigger the tourist regions that we have. Completely agree. Yeah, distributing more the tourism that are, that are arriving to our place, uh, to Costa Rica, and uh, hopefully, um, having a better quality of life, our population, thanks to tourism, and a better quality of services, our tourists that we uh, receive in Costa Rica. And uh, to, to, to continue, there's something, one of my, my owners of hotels, a foreigner that is owner of one of my hotels in, in uh, Puerto Viejo, Le Camaleon Heat, he told me that uh, Costa Rica has something interesting. It's not necessarily on the top of mind of a tourist willing to travel. Maybe the top of mind will be some destination like, I don't know, Mexico, Ecuador, Peru, I, I don't know. The, Costa Rica is now, when you ask somebody, uh, where will you spend your vacation? Top of mind will be some of these big, um, uh, uh, tourist destinations but as soon as you mention Costa Rica everybody will say oh I have always wanted to go there or this is my dream destination it's like uh, everybody will be excited about the possibility of coming to Costa Rica but still they won't have us in the top of mind so it's a kind of, a, of a, a sex appeal of magic that Costa Rica has that is not uh, so evident. You no, know, the there's a lot of things we have going for us, Danny, but you know what my, my number one feeling is as a marketing guy? We got the best name. <laughs> we got the best name. Starting with the name, for example. Costa yeah. Rica sounds way better than El Salvador. Sorry to yeah, Bukele. Sorry, sorry. Who, sorry Bukele. Who, who save us from. <laughs> <laughs> Last question, Dan. 
of all the things that have changed in Costa Rica in your time, uh, working, observing, traveling, what do you hope never changes? What I hope never changes in Costa Rica is the, I can choose only one. <laughs> oh, you can, you can throw a couple out there. Okay, it, uh, on, on the first line, the ticos. I hope ticos never change. The ticos never change the the attitude of uh, the pura vida attitude. The the um, the in you know to continue being cultivated, educated, learning. Uh, that the ticos never change the natural way of being of, with the tourists, uh, being friendly, but not extremely pushy and so on. Uh, I, I think the probably the biggest attraction Costa Rica has for the tourists are interacting with the local population. And I, I think uh, we are not aware of a, of a not aware, not proud of uh, being ticos and how ticos are, and uh, that tourists really enjoy the, this uh, cult cultural interchange with the Costa Ricans. That that on the first place, and in um, uh, on the second place, of course, um, preserving um, our nature. And then not not only the forest, but preserving preserving the well-being, the welfare that we have, the also the coastlines and uh, everything, Pre preserving the nature, preserving what tourists come here to explore and to visit and to enjoy, and uh, those two things I don't I I hope that will never change. And if it changed, that it will be only to improve. Circling back to your, your comment about we need to distribute tourists to new destinations, are there any off-beaten path, lesser known, rural, other destinations that you hope we develop in the next few years? You know, where, where are your favorite secret spots, the hidden gems? Uh, well, the, the, I'm sure there are plenty. I'm sure there are plenty because uh, um, doing what I do with, with my experience of uh, promoting hotels in uh, a lot of uh, destinations, some of them are on the, um, the most well-known tourist attractions, okay? But some of them are on destinations that are not that well-known or were not that well-known in the past. And, and, and the showing those destinations to people is very exciting. Show them show them that the, the South Pacific is not only Osa, but also Golfo Dulce. And then many people uh, only say, as a cliche, I want to go to Osa. And then, um, or Corcovado, but but uh, well, it, it could be even more uh, exciting to be in the Gulf of Dulce or in, in, in the Golfito Preserve, or you know there and there are plenty of places like that, plenty of little uh, towns and populations that the people, when they discover it, they say we need to do something here. Yeah. You know, yeah. right now the, the the Los Chiles area with Caño Negro, it's very little development there. But w when you go and visit that place, it's like this is amazing. Why is it going only to Tortuguero? Yeah, and distribute the people better in different regions. Yeah, for people who don't know, that's way up north, close to Nicaragua, north of Lake Arenal. And I agree. There, I mean, and that's big country up there. I mean, that's where the country, I mean, you've got a map behind you. That's where the country really opens up. It's large and relatively unexplored and a completely different cultural part of Costa Rica. I could see some sort of like a colonial savanna style, you know, almost cowboy hotel working up there. 
There's, again, sometimes I think that we're at the we're at the peak of Costa Rica tourism. Sometimes I think we're Hawaii in the '80s. You know, we've got another 30 great years ahead of us. De depending on where you are, and you know, uh, like a couple of days ago, I, I was coming from from the Central Pacific area, and I stopped to have lunch on the, the restaurant, which is on the, on the beachfront on the coast. And I saw a sign, Playa Pita, and said, never heard about this Playa Pita, about this uh, beach. And I walked to the water and took a picture of amazing, beautiful beach with no infrastructure, no hotels, nothing, and uh, just beautiful. And I posted it <laughs> and asked the people, do you know where, which beach this is? And uh, I bet nobody knew that the, half of them said, yes, we know, but I bet they didn't know that there is a, a beach here called Playa Pita. Is that, that, is, is that Guanacaste? Huh? Is that Guanacaste? No, close to Jaco. Oh. It's even close to San Jose. It's didn't know. <laughs> Daniel, last, last question, I swear. Where are you traveling to next? I mean, for somebody who used to be on the road, geez, what? 20, 30 weeks a year, you must be getting uh, cabin fever. Do you have anything planned? No, Casey, I, I am honest. I have, I have enjoyed a lot not traveling for a year now uh, because those, those uh, trips were more, like I told you, working business trips. So I have enjoyed being in Costa Rica and traveling in, in Costa Rica and going to my hotels, my babies, and checking the protocols and the places and the improvements that we have uh, done. So I have enjoyed traveling in Costa Rica and, and uh, I feel privileged to be able to do that. But uh, if we're talking about um, business trips, the next one that is on the agenda is Fitur. Fitur is normally in January and they will do a presential uh, show this year and it's planned for May. So if it happens, because we were talking before that you never know if, uh, how things develop, but if it happens, uh, I, I already uh, registered with the ICT to have a, a table at Fitur in May and that would be my next trip. To and where is that? Trip. Where's that show? Madrid in oh, Spain. Oh, wow. nice. And, um, it, yeah, it, it's uh, the Spanish market has been one of the main markets for Costa Rica coming from Europe, and uh, because we have also the almost daily flights, almost mm -hmm. in the past were right. daily flights from Iberia. So it's a, a show mainly for Spanish market and Spanish speaking. A lot of Latin American uh, people go there also. Well, I certainly hope it happens. It'd be wonderful to see if we actually start having meetings and events someday again in our lives. Daniel, thank you so much for your time. It's always fun speaking to you and let's do it again soon. Yeah, yeah, I, I have enjoyed it a lot, Casey. And, uh, and uh, thank you for um, having this, this show and uh, sharing it with the people. And um, I, I actually, uh, you have been an inspiration for me. I have big admiration for you, and and uh, I I enjoy sharing. So anytime you want to repeat it, please. Repeat always fun talking with you. I always learn something. Muchas gracias. Gracias. Let's talk tourism. <laughs>